But I knew exactly what I was gonna do. I, from like 16, I always was constantly planning. So for me, it was never of like, of course I had to take, you know, faith, like just have faith and take a step, you know, without knowing. But I always had some type of plan from when I was like 16 years old, I had like 23,000 followers on Twitter. And um, the whole time I was making relationships. So I lived in Arizona, but I was making relationships with people that was moving out here at that time that was doing promotion. That was a Tumblr era. So I was heavily influenced by everything that was going on in New York. I was always making connections. I got hacked and then I had to kind of like figure it out. I got hacked right before I moved here. So, you know, living in Harlem, it's like the thing about New York is everybody here kind of, they don't really care what you do. It's kind of a free space to kind of be who you want to be and to express yourself so that kind of made it a whole lot easier being going into it just saying listen i want to be who i want to be and just creating a clean step slate and of course the fact that i didn't know anybody here you know it just made me it had it had a lot more drive like i had a whole lot more drive because it's like it's either all or nothing or i'm taking my ass back to arizona and yes. that's not part of the plan so yes all right so stunner so wait all right now that uh that's the comedy legend Rudy Rush. He's he's uh one of the dudes who wrote on the Chappelle show. Rudy, what's up, Rudy? Um, yo, so son of also now being that so you saying basically from your own words, the premise of you getting to where you was getting is the networking, right? And being outside, right? A plan. Staying, plan. I have oh. because I mean, I was 18, so I was outside, but I couldn't go to, like, the clubs and stuff. I was just outside at the right places, you know, mangling. That was when Cardi B came out. I think uh, Love and Hip Hop put me in the introduction. I was happy. I had a decent manager, and I was working at the Jack Thriller show. So, yeah, like, I was up there doing interviews with This Is 50. But for me, now, everybody that I meet or that I've known, it's not that I met, I met, I met them a long time ago, but really it's all a blur to me because I didn't really know what was going on. And a lot of people didn't know, like I was just 18 and I didn't know what the fuck, but I was being professional and I just had my mind on the go. But all of those early steps of my professionalism, I'm realizing that they created a really strong foundation for what I'm doing right now. Cause when I was doing that, when I first moved here in the first five months and I went viral with Cassidy, Mark John and Tyrone, and I went viral um, and loving hip hop, and I went viral with. Uh, Yo, and, and let me not, let's can we talk on that too? Really, you get hit because you were first off. So me going through your page, I'm like, this girl's into everything, right? Like you're rapping, you're fucking modeling, you're at the fucking video shoots. You know, you are in the premise of being outside. That's yeah. what this this game is about. And I think that you have hit it on the money. Now, my question to you is. All right, so now let's let's really get into this, right? So uh, the first things also on my show is that I am somebody who pushes forward for black women. That is the majority of my listeners. That is who I am just accountable for. That is who I promote, and that's all I really care about, the promotion of well-being of black women, then black people, and then young entertainers, right? Yeah. And so my question to you is, I have Mariah Lynn on the show, right? And mm -hmm. I was asking Mariah, how does she feel about toxic masculinity in hip-hop? Yeah. You know, I, that's because, crazy. you know, son, we I looked at, look, 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 project, if y'all don't know, I just styled Mariah Lynn for her new project for her next um, video that's coming out. And it's a passion project called Stole My Bitch. I styled every look in there. And yeah, shout out to Serge. He shot that. Mm. Shout out to everybody. So yeah, you can keep on though. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> no, so son, I'm with you on, no, I'm with you. Now, my question is though, so when I asked Mariah, I asked her about the, the, the mad toxic masculinity in hip hop because you know my thing is as a commentator somebody who's here and I've been around the scenes work with all these artists I look at things like you know we're coming of age now and you know I looked at things like uh, I looked at the things like the Bill Cosby the R Kelly situation right and I just didn't want to how do I say it? I didn't want to be around all these guys and be a commentator and be one of these people and then be around a situation like that or be in this environment and we all because that was the first thing that we asked the, the older generation how is it that he was able to do all this and everybody was around right so that, i guess so when i ask so when i ask mariah lynn well what does she feel about the 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 environment right now in hip-hop how's how does she feel about everything 
And she said that's actually cleaner. If you look at, you know, the Migos, I mean, oh, excuse me, if you look at Quavo, how you look at how the, the brothers are treating their women and promoting their women now, it's a whole different environment. So it is getting better. So I wanted to talk to you. I want to talk to you. Right. That's what I'm saying. Is I, I did want to talk to you about, I did want to talk to you about these things because you are really boots on the ground. And yes. so, real quick, can you just, how do you feel about the the masculinity in the culture? How do you feel about predatory ways? Talk about it. Well, what's going on? What have you experienced? You've been on set with Fabio Foreign, Famous Dex? From, from just, like, my experience personally from coming in, it's, I think it's a fine line in both of the things that you say, too, because you, you talk about, like, uh, how those guys are promoting their women and stuff. But these are also women who kind of had a name for themselves in a career that's also helping those other people grow. I think it's also a little bit different for women who may not have as much talent or as much power and stuff like that. And guys with ego will always take advantage. And for me, you know, I think that I moved here at 18. So I was really, really young. And now I'm getting a lot better. But I was really heavy on the defense side because I always had an independent mind like right now where I was business motivated but being a young black woman in the industry is like what the fuck do you know like do you you know what I mean? so I was constantly like pushing back every single time like listen I'm on a defense mode because it's either um, oh yeah you're beautiful you don't really know that much but I'm a I'm gonna do work with you because you know I found you sexy or whatever the case is or uh if if you flirt with me then I'm willing to do more business moves but if you trying to be on just business time then I'm not really going to give you the spotlight or the opportunity and I think that's still something that's very much happening just that guys don't have as much control in it because women are building their own brand and their own images, yes. you know, and right. moving forward. They come, right. like, if you need it, join it. Why not? But those same people not going to say, like, oh, whatever they do in their relationships or whatever, but those same people who are broadcasting their women or still like that, they're still treating other women who don't have as much power or could be the next person just as powerful as their woman, very misogynistic or whatever. So, you know, I feel like it's That's a true side. Worry. You can't, as in, as in, and, and, and I think I get, it, correct me if I'm wrong, what you're getting here is also is that because you may promote uh, be, not being male chauvinistic to certain women doesn't mean that you treat all women that way, right? Exactly. Um, I, and which is things that I can... So with everybody, of course, they're with their wives and R. Kelly and stuff with their wives, they... I didn't have a clue. He's normal when he comes home. Yeah, but he has so much power that all of the people that are around him in those times when you're not around, that doesn't mean that he's not doing that. He might even be doing it more because he knows he has whatever his situation is there. You know what I mean? And Jumbo time. Who's outside? You already know.